breaking news. Nikon ousts the red CEO. He's gone. They put in their own guy. I'm going to tell you all about the old guy and the new guy and the huge inevitable culture clash and how I think things are going to unfold. But first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You start at squarespace.com slash Tony. There you can get your own custom domain, set up your own website with your branding, all about you, your project, your business, your photography, your reel, whatever it is. It all starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. They will make you look fantastic because it's not social media. This is content that you own and create. This is about your brand with no external advertising or anything because it's all about making you money and building you up. Once again, start at squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out completely free. After you love it, if you want to sign up, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. So to back up a little bit, just like a month ago, Nikon announced that they were buying red, which is huge news. Like Nikon for a hundred years has been making mostly still photography cameras and then they introduced some hybrid video capabilities, but they never made a dedicated video camera. They definitely never made a cinema camera, but there's this very little Hollywood company, Red Digital Cinema, who makes dedicated cinema cameras, really high-end stuff, you know, 8K and global shutters, very specialized tools for the purpose of filmmaking. Red and Nikon were suing each other over some patent stuff, and then out of nowhere, bam, Nikon just bought the whole company, and suddenly they're like a major player in filmmaking equipment. It was mind blowing, but we were all left wondering how are they going to reconcile these huge corporate culture differences, a Tokyo based company and a wild LA company. We have some answers now and it's pretty exciting. Nikon got rid of the CEO and the founder, both of them, and made them what they call advisors. And in a merger situation, this is pretty typical. If you plan to change the direction of the company, you will put in your own person and you don't necessarily just send the former leadership packing, right? Because you might need to ask them some questions, find out where the proverbial bodies are buried, right? So you, you keep them on as advisors. You give them a pretty decent salary and that means they pick up the phone <laughs> when you call and that can make a merger go much smoother. But I want to take a second and have you meet Jared land just to get a feel for his vibe. I'm the co-owner and president of Red Digital Cinema. Really what we enjoy doing is sitting down with filmmakers and designing custom cameras. This is him on the set of the latest Matrix movie where they used red cameras. What do you think of his vibe? It's like very Hollywood, right? It's like wearing flip-flops and getting out of a Ferrari kind of Hollywood. Now brace yourself for a different vibe. This is the new CEO of Red. Kaiji Oishi, and I'm sorry for my pronunciation. I'm an American, that's, that's really the best I could do. Each of us at Nikon has done our best to improve our camera and lenses, thus enhancing overall concentration and the natural joy of shooting. It's our drive and passion. In my first video about Nikon buying red, I spent a lot of time talking about how mergers were difficult even when there weren't huge culture gaps. But those two videos really show you what a dramatic culture gap there is between 100 year old Tokyo based Nikon and the very young, very Hollywood red digital cinema camera company, right? Let's get to know the new red CEO a little bit. Up until well, a few days ago, he was a manager of what they called the UX experience at Nikon. That, that's the user experience. It's, you know, everything from how the camera is handled to anytime you interact with the customer, things like sales and support could also be grouped under there. Oishi was a manager, which is not a VP. And so this is actually a huge promotion for him. And I'm kind of surprised that they didn't choose a higher ranking executive for this. But he is the guy that Nikon sent to interview with DP Review often. He seems pretty well versed in American culture, pretty good command of English. So I 
think those might have been factors in the selection. And while Nikon relegated the CEO and founder to advisory positions, Nikon also promoted internally within RED Tommy Rios, giving him the title of co-CEO, which I find completely bizarre because Oishi got the title of CEO and Rios got the title of co-CEO, but there's only one co-CEO. It is not uncommon for companies to have co-CEOs that have equal power, but the fact that there's one CEO and one co-CEO makes me think that they do not have equal power. And it actually seems like Nikon is making a point of saying, okay, Oishi here is in charge, while Rios has a title that will allow him to do some business and sort of head up the American part of the organization while still definitely taking orders from Oishi. Nikon doesn't go into huge detail. That's just my interpretation of why they were given those titles. If you have a different take, I'd be glad to hear it. Now we can kind of ask what's next. We know for sure that Nikon isn't leaving Red B. I really thought they might just be buying Red to settle some lawsuits and get access to some patents so they could put them in their own cameras and then each company would just go their own separate ways while being co-owned. That is definitely not the case because as you saw from that video with Land, the former CEO, he was, his, his personality was a huge part of the company and now he's gone. That whole personality is gone. His relationships, they're pretty much gone. In Oishi's own words, here's what he said. I believe it is my mission as the representative of Red to develop the market in a way that will pay respect to the corporate cultures of Red and Nikon. You can look forward to Red's future product development, which will aim to meet and exceed the expectations of cinematographers around the world. So there are some key things in there. He's saying they're going to continue to develop Red products. And I believe them. They would use different wording if they were planning on completely discontinuing Red. But he also said that they will pay respect to the corporate cultures of Red and Nikon. They're going to be pulling in the Nikon corporate culture to Red. And as you saw from the two videos of the two CEOs, those corporate cultures are vastly different. We're talking about trying to mix oil and water. And if there is any incompatibility, I'm confident that it's the Nikon corporate culture that will win out over the red corporate culture. Chelsea and I had different takes on what might happen. So here's my take. I think Nikon is going to absorb red. I think Nikon will use Red's patents and technology, use it to expand their existing cinema lineup, but doing so under a new Nikon branding. Like right now, the Red cameras are named things like Komodo X and V Raptor XL, like they're named after Predators because it's super cool. It's like Hollywood, right? Nikon cameras are not named like that. Like they're not so aggressive and dangerous and sharp edged. I suspect these will probably be rebranded in line with the Nikon culture and probably using the Nikon name because I think part of the goal here is to expand the Nikon brand so people think of it not just as stills cameras, which it really is stuck in that hole right now, but as stills and video cameras. And, and if you get the credibility of being a cinema camera, then the average videographer shooting real estate on the weekends is going to think that the Nikon camera is extremely capable of that. So I think the new branding will be something like the Nikon ZR1. <laughs> and maybe not that exactly, but I think they'll lead with the name Nikon. They'll find some way to incorporate red. Maybe they'll say Nikon red Z1 or something. They'll definitely probably keep like the red shutter buttons and some other signatures of the red branding, but they'll get rid of the predator names and really bring the name recognition around the words Nikon and probably Z mount too. That's just my take. Chelsea thought they might be putting in a Japanese CEO to take advantage of the things that American companies do really well. There's a big divide in Japanese and American business cultures. Uh, Japanese cultures, they're, they're pretty risk adverse compared to American companies. They're kind of afraid of failure, so they don't like to take a lot of chances because it would be embarrassing for them to fail. Now, American business, we're, that's my background, we are wild. We go all in, we take crazy risks and people will put billions of dollars into something that they think has a 2% chance of success. If it's going to potentially make a hundred times more 
then, then they're willing to take crazy risks and there's not so much shame in failing. You'll go a few years down a path and be like, yeah, yeah, we tried to do self-driving cars and then we just cut the whole division. Like Apple literally, they literally did that <laughs> because it's an American company, but a Japanese company, they wouldn't be so likely to take those risks. And maybe Nikon's corporate culture appreciates the things that American companies do well, like taking risks. That's certainly something that could benefit Nikon. So by putting in a Japanese CEO who is pretty comfortable with American culture, maybe they could use that American team to do things like um, improve the software on Nikon cameras. It is the user experience manager. So he might be particularly good at figuring out ways to take their user interface that they have, the touch points, bring that red feel over into the Nikon world. So Chelsea and I have pretty different takes, but what do you think? What is Nikon doing with red now that the CEO and founder are merely advisors? How is Oishi going to integrate into that crazy Hollywood environment? Will Nikon continue to be accepted in the ways that red has been embraced? Or will Hollywood look the other way? I'd like to hear it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to see more reviews, our live show every Thursday at five, photography tutorials, and of course, breaking news. And thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony, where you create a website for your photography, for your video reel, your restaurant, your dentist's office, whatever you do, Squarespace gives you your own custom domain. They make you look great with professional designs that are maintained and secure and broadly compatible and all this nerdy stuff that you don't have to think about because that's what they do. And no, it's not completely free, but it's inexpensive and you can try it out for free at squarespace.com slash Tony. You'll love it and you'll get what you pay for, <laughs> right? But it doesn't have to cost you that much because the coupon code Tony can save you 10%. I promise it's worth it. Thank you, Squarespace. Bye.